Hello, I'm back with some updates. If you're new here, welcome to my channel. Uh, I'm Mel, this is Mel's Health, and I sporadically make content around my continual recovery from pulmonary embolism, which is also known as blood clots in both of my lungs. It's been, I think, almost two months since my last update. I've never known appointments to actually happen so fast in Canada, but I have had a couple, um, so I'm just gonna update you on what I know today. So the last time I made a video, I spoke about having a referral to the hypertension specialists in Vancouver, and uh, they did actually pick it up, and I've had an in-person appointment with that doctor, who was a world apart from the respiratory specialists that I was dealing with and kind of complaining about in my last video. Um, the guy that I met with in Vancouver was just uh, not in a rush. He was just open to questions, conversation, he was empathetic, so all round, it was just a much better experience. So first things first, um, I don't have hypertension, which I'm pretty much sure we all knew based on the countless tests that I've done over the last few years. Uh, but now we've got that kind of gold standard tick from this specialist guy who sees it day in, day out, who has uh, looked at all of the tests that I've done, whether it's the lung function, the stress test, the ECGs, and then he actually did an EKG while I was there as well, and just said that all of my results are constantly within the averages for women of my age, height, and weight range. So um, he was just like, yeah, he's more than confident to just be like, you don't have hypertension. Um, so obviously that's great news, um, kind of already knew it, but like now we've actually got that kind of seal of approval from uh, someone who specializes in it just to be like, yep, yeah, okay, everything in that sense is fine. Um, so the conversation led more to why I was referred there in the first place, and it links back to the VQ scan that I had um, last summer. So I think it's two videos ago now, um, I kind of brought out, brought up that, uh, yeah, last summer time, um, I had a repeat VQ scan, which is the nuclear medicine scan that looks at the airflow in your lungs and the blood flow in your lungs. And if you have blockages uh, anywhere, they call it a mismatch. Um, and then they obviously have to follow up on that. Um, and I had one at the end of last summer that basically mirrored the same scan that I had the year that I was diagnosed with blood clots. Um, so it just showed there was a continual blockage. So going back to that conversation, because that's pretty much why I was um, given this referral and I keep complaining about like ongoing kind of smaller symptoms, like constant like aches, pains or jabs or easy breathlessness, fatigue, that type of thing. Um, and so bringing that up with this guy, he had looked at also the CT that I've had since then as well and just said like, yeah, you can still see clotting. He's like, um, doctors are obviously looking at different things for different scans. Um, he's obviously trying to look in depth at the fact that these clots are still there. So um, he said, you know, you're now at the point, it's the fact that yes, it's chronic clots, like you have chronic clots. The fact that they're still there four years later and you're on blood thinners uh, for life and everything like that, um, it means they're not going anywhere. So the chronic clots that I do have, they're mainly in the walls of my lungs, um, which might be why my symptoms aren't like crazy severe and I haven't got the hypertension or anything like that. Um, but he basically just said like, they're never gonna go away. Like if they haven't cleared up already, then they're not going anywhere. So um, this is where the conversation kind of leads into, okay, so what does that mean? So I obviously asked that and kind of thought, said, you know, what does the longer term look like? Because everything's just been focused on diagnose something, diagnose something, take this test, take this test. But it's like, um, if everything is actually coming back quite normal, um, but I have this issue that's underlying, you know, what does that actually mean for the future? So he kind of brought that back to the fact that just because hypertension isn't existent now, it's not something that can't happen if anything ever gets worse, if I re-clot or anything like that, there's different factors that can come into play. Also just, I think generally getting older and weaker as you do, um, things can always change. Um, because of the chronic clots, he says it's just a good idea that for life, I basically get monitored once a year by having an ECG just to like make sure that nothing is happening to my heart or anything like that. Um, so that's one thing to kind of keep note as we kind of carry on with this conversation is just that because these chronic clots aren't going anywhere, it means that I'm obviously always gonna to have to have some sort of monitoring. Um, so when I started talking to him about, you know, improvement and stuff like that, um, one thing he said was he's not sure why I still feel like pains or anything at this point. He doesn't know why this far down the line things are still causing that because uh, they should be gone by now. Um, but in regards to obviously breathlessness and easy fatigue and that type of thing, that it's more than likely these chronic clots are the things that are feeding into that. 
So when it comes to seeing improvement, obviously I am not in like an urgent state. So he said it was good that I'm, you know, trying to be more active and I can obviously take time and see if I do feel any improvements by getting more and more active. Um, but the fact that they're not going anywhere, like I keep saying, is that nothing's really going to get worse, but it's also not really going to get better in a sense. Um, so I'm at a point of whether I can just live with this general feeling that I'm kind of used to every day because it's not causing anything sinister right now. Um, or there is uh, the surgical procedure that they usually refer hypertension, uh, di people that are diagnosed with hypertension um, to have a surgical procedure to remove the chronic clot. So people that are diagnosed with CTEF, which is chronic thromboembolic pulmonary hypertension, um, I think they're pretty much automatically referred down the path of having a surgical procedure to remove the chronic clot that is causing the excess pressures within their lungs and heart because um, it's basically the only kind of cure for that diagnosis. Um, it's a very, very serious diagnosis, which is why I'm so glad that I don't have it. Um, but he did bring up the surgical procedure as an option and something to explore if uh, I want to kind of look at getting rid of these chronic clots. Um, and it's something that they would actually entertain if I was interested in it. Now, I'm going to just continue on this kind of vague description of this whole situation because the surgical procedure in itself is quite a big topic that I would rather make a separate video and just kind of explain all the information that goes into it. Um, and also I'm not on that path at the moment. It's something for me to consider as to whether I want to kind of go down that route um, to actually have this procedure to get rid of these chronic clots. So as it stands, because I am in this kind of healthy state, as in all the tests and everything coming back normal, um, nothing really needs to happen. I'm just going to carry on being more active than usual, um, trying to see if that gives me any kind of improvement of the sort. Um, but it's just something to kind of keep in mind and maybe pursue the information of what does it entail? You know, what improvements would I see? Um, all the risks and everything related to actually having a procedure um, to get these chronic clots removed um, before I actually end up with maybe a diagnosis of CTF down the line if anything else happens, like the potential of reclotting, which is rare because I'm on medication but not impossible, um, or any other health implications down the, in the future as well. So it's just kind of if I was to like summarize in bullet points, it's like don't have hypertension right now, but that doesn't mean I can't uh, develop it in the future. I do have chronic clots, which are never going to go anywhere. And uh, I'm in this kind of stagnant state of nothing getting worse, nothing getting better. Um, so just continually kind of monitor myself and see if this is either a state that I can continue to live with and I'm happy to, to do so, or it's something that I pursue uh, getting information around surgery to actually get rid of them. So that was obviously a very, very like quick kind of update, a very kind of high level overview of like uh, all the information that I was uh, given on the day. Um, I absolutely will make a video talking about this surgical procedure because even though it's not something that I'm obviously going towards right now, it's something that I am having to think about. I want to know all the information about and I think it would be something great to actually have a first-hand experience of someone talking about it from this point of view as well because as far as I can see at the moment, most videos on the internet are of uh, uh, like the actual surgeons performing the surgery or professors at university giving lectures around it. Um, which again is not always relatable content. So uh, I'm going to try and piece together all the information that you would see from like the patient's point of view and kind of how that like looks uh, because it's not your everyday operation. It's not a surgical procedure that's just like quite straightforward. Um, as far as I can see from looking online, there's only like 30 centers in the entire world that actually perform this type of surgery. Um, so it's, uh, yeah, it's quite a big topic um, and I will make that into a separate video. But to kind of end this video off, talking about exercise, um, I've already kind of hit the goal of the year. I've, uh, in my last video, I talked about climbing the Squamish Chief, which is a local hike nearby that quite a lot of locals do on like a, a weekly basis. Um, but I hadn't been up there for about uh, five years. Um, but uh, my sister-in-law was visiting the other week and my husband and sister-in-law decided to take me up there on a very sunny Saturday that we had and uh, I got to the top. So I'm gonna to put a few clips in at the end of this video, just kind of showing 
what it was like for me being quite breathless doing that amount of exercise in one go um and then actually getting to the top um and i've also made a short that is currently on my instagram but i'll put it on here as well if you only want to stomach a 40 second video of it um but yeah one goal ticked and i will just try and continue to uh be active for the rest of this year and probably put up some more bike content um when the weather changes um, so yeah, I hope you found this kind of remotely interesting. Um, and obviously the bigger topic will be the surgical procedure that I will do an entire separate video on. Um, but for now, yeah, enjoy me suffering going up a mountain and I will see you in the next one. All right, thanks. Bye. Checking for the chief for the first time in five years. Not looking forward to it. We're literally almost up the stairs. Yeah, I'll step up to the stairs. My body isn't hurt though, you're like my legs don't hurt. Yeah. My legs do. Uh, <laughs> it goes slower. It's no, it's not a race. Yeah. But then I like, I started to get dizzy. But I went to I put my foot on a step, and I was like, "Where's the step?" <laughs> I just had to look down and get it done. It's so dizzy. It is a bit disorientating, the stairs. Uh. Oh. It's got steeper all of a sudden. Stairs coming up. <laughs> right, that's it, right? It's literally that ladder. There. Put the wheezies. <laughs> there you, are, you did it, Rog. Yeah. Well done.